I made Whoa. Jackson drive all the way down here because I lost uh, one of the wrist pin clips, so I couldn't do piston number six. And then right before he got here, I opened up the rings for number one so that we could get started. And it was in there. I'm sorry. It's all right. So, I got it back. <laughs> so we got an extra. But uh, he's down here anyways to grab his head so that he can take it over to Brad's and have it pressure tested. Because although they skimmed it, they did not do a valve job on this one. And I'm just not comfortable throwing it all together unless I know it's, you know, been pressure tested. And if they have any issues, a quick valve job. And then he'll bring it back. And this should be ready. Stays down. See that? which means we can dig out our ARP rod pulps and we can dig out our bearings and we can go ahead and assemble this uh, bottom end. Unlike the main bearings, these rod bearings are um, indistinguishable, I guess would be a good way to put it. Top to bottom doesn't matter. You can grab that one, that one. Go ahead, throw them in. All right, let's do it. Can't forget about that. My squaring tool. Ooh. Here we have an 84 and a half millimeter ARP ring compressor. Remember, there's markings on one side of the cap and not the other. And these caps are made as one piece with the rod and then they're broken and these dowels are added. Do you see the crack and how it's not actually a straight clean line? So if you put that backwards, it would essentially, I think damage the rod, but also hurt the crank. Before we drop any piston into the motor, we always wanna make sure that your rings are all aligned. And what I mean by that is first off, you don't have any ring opening near a wrist pin because this is a weak, weak part of the piston. Here is your thick part. So right here, we're going to have either the upper or the lower ring. This side is gonna have the lower ring because this is just OCD, but I like to do it. If you look there, you can see that the lowest oil scraping ring there or whatever this part is, right there, it meets with the lowest one right here. Then we can turn it around we find, where's our upper? Slide that around. There we go. So we have that right in the middle now of our boss. Now we just line up the upper ring to this boss in the upper part there. And the lower ring matches up the lower one there. Now we'll take it and slide it into our ring compressor. Intake valves. 
exhaust valves. That's set in its home. That looks good. It's nice and straight. Let's go ahead and see if it comes up. We'll go ahead and take our ARP assembly loop that came with the uh, rod bolts. We will put it right there on the threads and on the bottom of the bolt right there where it seats so that uh, everything's smooth when we torque. Y'all remember Plasti Gauge, right? Right there on the bearing. Jackson's head is back from the machine shop. And man, does this thing look clean. Those look so much better than before. I'm just so much happier throwing this motor together now with a fresh valve job, fresh head. This is an M52 head, so you can tell those springs are just a hair smaller and they are singles. But a lot of people that I know run like 100% ignition cut again on these and, and they don't drop a valve or anything like that. The dual valve spring thing is just for added safety. So I'm not worried at all about him laying that one on the limiter, even if he does end up with some ignition cut, which I don't think he can with RK tunes. I think he will be fuel cut. Let's get it knocked out. Almost ready to put the head on this thing. For his oil pump, we are actually not running an upgraded shaft. And once it's mounted and I have gas for the welder, I will go ahead and reinforce the bucket when I tack weld the nut on. But if y'all remember, I had to cut off the nut from his original one. It had a little tack weld on it. So once I'm done installing that and everything's set up here, I will tack the nut on the front and reinforce the bucket before we put the oil pan on. Ooh, that new chain is tight. Oh, there it is. You really gotta fight that on. Okay, let's get that nut and start working it on. Let's go ahead and do the timing chain guides now that I've got the two dowels installed. The big one, which gets pushed on by the uh, main chain tensioner in the head, clips on right here. As you can see, they are just clip style. And they don't need any lubrication or anything like that. That one is on and ready. And then we will get the other chain guide. Now, this one has a long side and a short side, as you can see, short, long. Long side goes down into the head. The short side kind of stays away from the chain guy, from the uh, sprocket right there. So this one, just like the other one, just lines up on its dowels there. Click right into place there. We just need to make sure to lube these nicely before we put our timing chain in. Box of many things. Heaviest chain of them all, I would assume. I'm gonna pop that one off. 
actually make it easier. Get this chain into place. ready for the timing cover it's nice and clean and we have some new gaskets for it but I do want to go ahead and silicone these just to be safe before we throw that on very very thin layer I may add because we will do both sides uh, or the gasket side too that being said a little bit of the back stuff goes a long way 